Amen. If I could have your attention, um, I'm just going to read a scripture, and then um, we we've, we've got Genesis here today, and Sister Cecilia, and um, so we're going to start our service with a baby dedication, and. Cecilia wants to dedicate Genesis to the Lord. So let's, I just want to read Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, I'm reading verses 23 to 27. I'm reading from King James Version of the Bible, but it just simply says these words. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid for three months by his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's command. And then it says, by faith, Moses, when he came to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He made a choice to suffer affliction with God's people rather than enjoying the pleasure of sin for a season. And he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt he had respect unto the recompense of reward and by faith he left Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king and he endured as seeing him who is invisible all right amen you may be seated today and I, I just um, I want to just just speak just a few words and then we're going to pray a prayer and basically when we, when we go through an act of dedication, all we're saying is we're going to do the best we can to create an environment in which Genesis can grow up to know the Lord. That's what we're doing. As parents, we're doing that. As caregivers, we're doing that. And then as a church, we're doing that. We're saying we want to create a place where, where she can grow up to know the Lord. That's what we're trying to do. So it's... Um, and, and today... I really believe when you read Hebrews 11, all you see is the picture of the faith of a mother that was transferred to a child. Moses was able to do the things in his life later on that he did and make right And he was able to make right choices. I'm so sorry. He was able to make right choices because a mother had faith. A mother looked at her child and she said, you know what? God has given me something very good here. And because God gave me something good, regardless of what's happening around me, I'm going to believe the Lord. God's going to take care of the gift he gave to me. And more than that, God has a special plan for the gift he gave to me. And he will use it for his glory. And so God, just like he used Moses, he'll use Genesis. But we have to see the goodness of God. We have to recognize it. And sometimes we have to be willing to do something to help in the process. In other words, even when it looked like Moses was not going to make it, I believe the mother of Moses prayed a prayer. And she said, but I know God is going to make a way for my child. And she made a little basket. And she said, God will protect my child. And, and in this process of creating a place for God to work, she gave God a chance through her faith. And, and, and I believe that's the same thing that will happen. Um, when you get involved in this act of dedication, you're saying, you know what? I want to create a place where Genesis can know the Lord. So, church, why don't you stand? Um, and we're just going to pray a prayer. But before we pray the prayer, I'm going to... I'm just going to give a charge to our church congregation. And if you agree with what I'm saying, I want you to say amen. Before I do that, I'm going to encourage Cecilia. And I'm, going to, I'm just going to encourage you to be an example to Genesis. I'm going to encourage you to pray for her and teach her to pray at a young age. That's my encouragement to you. And, and lead her to an early experience in the Lord. 
Um, and then to this church. Here's what I'd say to our church. And when I get done just kind of reading this paragraph, if you agree with it, you can say amen. If you don't agree, please don't say anything. <laughs> or just see me after church. All right. So that Genesis can grow up to know God and His salvation. Will you purpose to keep this church a sanctuary in which God is pleased to dwell? And will you keep a spirit of love in your heart for the Word of God and the people of God? And will you dedicate yourself to fasting and prayer for continued revival in this congregation? And if you agree, amen. Amen. All right, we're going to pray for Genesis, and we're going to pray for Cecilia. So let's all pray together. Amen. Lord Jesus, you're here. And God, you're able, Lord, in every way. And, and Lord, you care about Genesis. You care about Cecilia. And, Lord, you're here to help them. You're here to cover them. You're here, Lord Jesus, to make a way for them. And I thank you for the faith of a mother. And I pray. I pray for Genesis, Lord. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to help her. Touch her, God. Cover her, Lord Jesus, all the days of her life. Be the way maker for her, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, just like you used Moses, you've got a plan to use her, Lord. Cover her life, Lord God. Allow her, Lord Jesus, God, to have a heart, Lord, that's after your own heart. And, and use Cecilia in this process. Bless her act of faith in this act of dedication. Bless the heart of a mother, Lord, that, that has a desire to see your glory, Lord, in, in Genesis' life. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Amen. Well, it's been a wonderful morning of dedication. So here's what we'll do. We're going to get right into our service uh, at this time. And you can just remain standing if you would. Um, but make sure you get to Cecilia and Genesis after church if you can and congratulate them. Amen. church we're gonna go through some announcements here real quick we've got quite a few so bear with me i'll stand just as long as you guys are standing so may everybody say may, may. happy may all right we've got a new prayer calendar or article here i guess newsletter thank you Loss of words here. Um, it's out on the foyer. It's on the table. Please grab one. Um, it's got a lot of great stuff on it. It's got some tools in the back to help you grow your prayer life. Uh, you will be blessed if you attempt to just work through that. Um, your prayer life will grow. Everybody say hyphen. Hyphen. Hyphen are meeting on a different day this year or this year, this month. Sorry. Um, on Saturday of this coming week, they're going to be meeting at a different location. If anybody is interested, see Brother Kevin. Brother Kevin, can you raise your hand? They're going to be out of town, and they're going to be doing a bonfire. The Lord willing. Lord willing. All right. Um, later this month on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, we're going to have a Sunday school seminar slash revival. So on that Friday, all of our Sunday school teachers, we're going to have a Sunday school seminar. We're going to learn some great things. And then on the 21st at 2 p.m., we're going to have a Sunday school service revival. It'll be great. It'll be amazing. God's going to move. And on the 22nd he, at uh, 10 o'clock, normal service, we're going to do the exact same thing, and God's going to move again. And they're both going to be here. Well, both those services will be here at New Life Church. Joy. Joy is meeting on Friday on the 6th at 6.30 at the Hartman's, the Hartman's place. So, thank you, Sister Lois. Um, and then we have a garage sale on the 6th and 7th. 
on the 6th from 4 to 7 p.m., and then on the 7th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at New Life Church. So if you need something, it's probably found downstairs. And it'll be cheap. It'll be cheap. All right. So that's the announcements. All right. So if our ushers could please come, and we'll take up our, our offering, and then we'll get right into it, and I'll get out of the way. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We honor you today, oh God. We thank you for being here in this place with us. We ask, oh God, that you would move in a mighty way and you would, your will would be done in this place. We're praying, oh God, for this offering. We're praying for the giver. And we're asking, Lord Jesus, that you would anoint both. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God's good. Disclaimer. The sound cuts out. We're going to keep singing because the truth of the matter is they didn't have sound a whole long time ago, but they did have their voice. So I'm just going to ask you, we're doing all that we know, but I'm. this is on you today. The worship needs to come from out here today if this all goes down. And even if this keeps going, it goes a whole lot better if the whole congregation comes together in one mind and in one accord and lifts up the name of Jesus in one voice. I'm so thankful for what God's been doing, and I'm thankful for what he is doing. And this week, God just really had a couple words for me, and it was just, I am a miracle-working God, and you have reason to rejoice in who I am. So if there is something you need today, you do not have to leave the same. You can leave with an answer. You can leave with a miracle because we're in the presence of the Almighty God. Why don't we worship him, welcome him in. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you meet us. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you are a miracle-working God, and there is no problem that is bigger than you. There is no stronghold that can hold you back. And Lord, I lift my hands to worship the King of Kings. Lord, I lift my hands in freedom because you are great. You do miracles so great. And Lord, we come to honor the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. And in this place today, we lift you up in one mind. We lift you up in one accord. We lift you up with one voice. And we say glory, glory to the God Almighty, to the one who sits on the throne whose train fills the temple because you've won. You've already won, and we lift you up. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. You deserve the glory. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, he does. And the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bow before you. Sing that again. You deserve the glory. Oh, and the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy. 
where you feel the presence of the Lord and it's good to celebrate what you feel amen I'm thankful for that and I don't believe we just walk by feelings but I also think that God gave us emotions to express those emotions to him and it's a wonderful thing amen when you can worship him with your whole heart amen I'm in Psalm 27 I'm starting at verse number four. I do want to say 
It's great to have my Uncle Dwayne here in church with us today. Um, this is my dad's brother. Just in case you can't see the Fleming shining through. But we appreciate him very, very much. Been a blessing to me personally. Um, ministered for many, many years and been used of God in great ways. And I'm thankful to call him my uncle. And more than that, I'm just thankful he's here with us now. And, um, and with my dad. Thankful for that as well. Amen. Psalm 27. I'm starting in verse number 4. I'm reading out of New King James. I'm reading all the way down to verse 14. So most of the psalm. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. To inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me. Answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God, my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. And I'm getting my thoughts out of verse 13. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And the message is the goodness of the Lord. If I could entitle it the whole thing, it would be the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Let's pray, and then we'll get in the word. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence that's here today. And, and I just pray, Lord, I just pray, oh God, that you would fill this place in a rich way, in a way, Lord God, that helps every individual that's here. We just pray, Lord. We we ask you, Lord God, to meet us in a special way. Leave no stone unturned. Touch us, God, and help us, Lord. Meet every need that is in this place today through the power of your Spirit. We'll be careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just say in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's... Um, well, the psalmist said, there's one thing I'm looking for. There's one thing I'm seeking. And I want to dwell. I, I want to be in. I want to dwell in your house or in your presence all the days of my life. I, I want to get to the place where I can get my questions answered. I want to see the beauty of the Lord. Um, you could say... In the presence of the Lord, many things take place in our life that help us in so many ways. You feel like the world is being shut out when you're in the presence of the Lord. You feel like the chaos and the hectic pace of life gets put on the back burner when you are in the presence of the Lord. When you enter into the secret place of the Most High, you could say, it's in that realm that you experience the glory of the Lord. The sweet presence of the Lord, David said, is a hiding place. And he said, it's a comforting place. 
He said, these are wonderful things that happen when you are in the presence of the Lord. But he said, here's what you need to know about what God did for me in his presence. He said, when I got into the presence of the Lord, I almost fainted. I almost fell. I wouldn't have made it except for I got into his presence. And it's not that I saw the greatness of the Lord there. It's not that I saw how awesome God was there. He said, what came through to me when I needed it the most, when I was there, is God started to show me his goodness all over again. When I God in the presence of the Lord, I realized how good God really is when I was in His presence. Amen. Amen. He said, my life is a life that's full of extremes. He said, I am um, at one point in my life, I'm on the mountaintop. How many of you know you can be on the mountain and in the valley all at the same time in life? And this is the crazy part about life. He said, my life is a life of extremes. He said, I, I, um, I at one point, he said, I, I feel as though I can say the Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. I won't fear anybody. <laughs> I'm invincible. I'm in God's presence. God is here with me. And on the other hand, I'm saying, God, please hear me when I pray. God, don't hide your face from me. I think David was the kind of guy he knew when he was in a battle, he needed God there by his side. David knew if there was one battle he got into and God wasn't there for him, he was in big time trouble. He said, God, when I'm out there on that battlefield, whatever it takes, don't walk away from me because I am completely dependent on your touch and your anointing. If you don't anoint me in the battle, there's no way I can win the battle. If you don't go before me in the battle, there's no way I can survive the chaos of the world that I'm living in. So don't leave me. Don't forsake me. Don't abandon me. Don't walk away from me. I'm going to need you every step of this journey because the life that I'm living, it just never seems to straighten out. The life that I'm living, it just never seems to arrive. How many of you know what I'm talking about? The life that I'm living... It just seems like it, the ducks never line up. The stars never align. It never gets put right. It never quite comes together. I, I don't ever see it really the way it's supposed to be. And, and he was being chased in his life by King Saul. He was anointed of God to be the, the next king of Israel, but it was never coming fast enough. And it, it never seemed like it was getting put together on time. And he knew God was with him. And yet, at the same time, he was in the valley and he was walking through places that he did not understand and he was he was walking in a in an experience where he felt like he was abandoned where he felt like he was forsaken where he felt like everyone he went to that could have helped him they were not necessarily there to help him and he was struggling through those places in his life and he was asking the question certainly while well, one part of his life was on the mountaintop but the other part was struggling he was asking the question god are you really involved in every part of my life? Or are you just involved in the highlights or the high points? And that's where the psalmist said, you know, I wouldn't have made it unless I understood the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Luke 12, 6 and 7, he says these words. Jesus said, are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more valuable than many sparrows. Do you understand how much God is concerned about you? Do you understand how much God cares about you? Not just the big things, but even the little things of your life. Do you understand that what might look elementary to you and simple to you, and you might think, well, God isn't really concerned about that. God is actually very concerned about that in your life. Amen. Amen. We need to talk about the goodness of God. I said we need to talk about the goodness of God. 
of God. Here's why you're going to make it. Because the goodness of God is in the land of the living. It will never make sense. Life will never completely straighten out. But the goodness of the Lord is there in the land of the living. There will always be another wrinkle in the shirt of life. But the goodness of God is there in the land of the living. There will always be troubled places, but the goodness of the Lord will meet you there in the land of the living. Amen. You could say, He is great. He is greatly to be praised. All of that is true. Amen. But thank the Lord for His goodness that is in the land of the living. When no one else will listen, God will listen. When no one else will comfort, God will will comfort. When no one else cares, God will care. When no one else will pick you up, God will pick you up. When no one else sees it, God sees it. When no one else is there for you, God is there for you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Amen. Just like a parent will not leave you or they won't want to forsake you. God doesn't want to leave you. God does not want to forsake you. God is interested in your journey. God is interested in you being an overcomer. God is interested and invested in this walk, in this journey with you. God has made commitments to bring His goodness to bear in your life, in the land of the living. When God anointed David, He said, My goodness and My mercy, they'll follow after you all the days of your life. I'm not going to walk away when you need Me the most. I'm going to stand with you when you're down in the valley fighting that giant. I will be there with you when you're hunted for your life. I will be there with you. My goodness will catch up to you it's going to follow after you don't look now but there's something right behind you Acts chapter 10 the apostle Peter preaching in the house of Cornelius he said these words he said beginning at the baptism of John he said God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the power of the Holy Spirit and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Before he talked about his healing, and I don't know how long Peter preached. By the way, I love Acts chapter 2 when it says, and Peter preached for a long time. <laughs> I think Luke thought he preached too long because he just said, and with many other words. Peter preached. <laughs> like Peter, you could have spared some of those words. <laughs> you could have just brought it to the point. So hopefully I can just bring it to the point here. Amen. Before Jesus did great and mighty miracles, he did good things. He was anointed by the Spirit to bring the goodness of God among the people of God. Amen. The first miracle that took place in the Bible was not raising Lazarus from the dead. The greatest miracle we see is John chapter 11, or at least I taught it this morning. That's the greatest miracle. I don't know if God saw it that way. The very first miracle that Jesus performed, he just made the drink taste better at the wedding. We maybe don't like to talk about it, but we have to. <laughs> it's in there. He, he went to a wedding ceremony. He didn't heal anybody. He didn't open any blind eyes. He didn't touch any lame legs. He helped a bride who was scared to death that her family was going to look bad in front of everyone else. Does Jesus care? Yes, He cares. And we sit and we study these things. I remember I went to a Bible college class, and the teacher said, now there's a tone and there's an overtone. We were studying the Gospel of John. And you've got to look deep. You've got to look so deep, 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 deep. Why don't we just look on the surface? I said, why don't we look on the surface? Jesus wants to help you. Jesus has cared about the things that you care about. Jesus doesn't want you to look foolish in front of a large group of people. 
Jesus is not about putting you down so that other people can look at you and make fun of you. Jesus will fight for you. Jesus will do secret miracles so that, so that you can move forward in your life. Jesus will get in the back room with somebody and tell them, we're going to turn this thing around. We're going to help this guy out. We're going to help this girl out. We're going to get involved here. I'm going to show somebody the goodness of the Lord. God's goodness is still in the land of the living. I don't want my people looking foolish. I don't want my people looking crazy. I'm not here to put you down. I'm here to lift you up. I'm going to get involved. And we read John chapter 2 and he says, it's not my time yet. And we go through and we talk about all the things. But the truth is, Jesus said, well, that's true. I'm not here to start this great prophetic movement or whatever. But I'm still going to help this lady out. <laughs> I'm still going to get involved and, and help this family out. Amen. I'm going to show somebody my goodness in the land of the living. I'm going to I'm going to communicate to somebody, amen, that God is in their corner. God is here to help them. Amen. I I want there to be a revelation. I want this to trickle through. I want this to somehow get out. The disciples, they knew what happened. They knew the goodness of the Lord was in the land of the living. That's why John said, "We saw the glory of God. We saw the awesome power of God. No one else knew it was there, but they knew God's goodness was there." Thank the Lord. You know, sometimes you come to church and you just have that funny little feeling. You know, when the Lord is close to you, you get that burning heart, that burning sensation. Well, God is here. At least God is here. Everything else might be going bad, but at least God is here. <laughs> at least the Lord is here. Amen. Thank God for that. You, you get that sense, but God is here. I said, but God is here. Amen. And I don't know what else is going to happen, but God is here. Like Mary looked at Jesus that day in the back room, and she said, I don't know what he's going to do, but whatever he tells you to do, just do it. In other words, you're going to see, you just watch and see the goodness of the Lord. It's going to be put on display in your life somewhere. And I'm preaching to somebody today that half of their life might be on the mountain and half might be in the valley. And you might not be able to make any sense of anything else. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, you don't have to faint. You don't have to stumble. You can get up and move on because the goodness of the Lord, it's still there in the land of the living. God takes care of people. God cares about what's bothering you and what concerns you. He cares about those things. Amen. Amen. David said, I wouldn't have made it, but I found the goodness of the Lord. I would have lived in constant fear of failure. I would have lived in fear of the future, but I found the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. He wants to show you he cares about you. Not just in the major events of your life, but when the small sparrow falls, God is still there. He's still there. Javelins being thrown at David, struggling through those places in his life, and yet, he said, I saw the goodness of the Lord I saw the beauty of the Lord. I saw it in my life in the land of the living. He said, Lord, lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Sometimes in life you get blindsided by things and you did not see them coming. I used to play a little sport in Minnesota. It was called hockey. Hockey is basically combat on ice. It's legalized combat on ice. And, and what happens many times in hockey is as you're playing, sometimes you get hit by stuff and you never saw it coming. And that's life. You never see it coming. And David said, Lord, there's so many times in life I never see it coming. So God, I'm going to need you to lead me. I'm going to need you to direct me. I'm going to need you to show me because if I go my own path, I'm not going to see your goodness. I need you, Lord, to show me the path. I need you, Lord, to order my 
steps because I'm believing if you're ordering my steps, I will be able to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Brother Mike came to me the other day. He said these words. I'm just starting to say, Lord, just show me the thing I'm supposed to do today. Show me the way I'm supposed to obey you today. These are just the things I'm trying to do. I want you to show me the next step that I'm supposed to take. Because if I do it my way, I'll get what I get. But if you can lead me in a plain path... I know I'll get ambushed somewhere along the way, but I also know that your goodness is there in the land of the living. Job said these words. He said, I go forward and he is not there. I go backward. I cannot perceive him. He said he works on the left hand. I cannot behold him there. When he turns to the right hand, I cannot see him there. But he knows the way that I take amen he knows the path i've walked to this moment he knows how i've gotten to where i am he knows where i am at this moment in time he knows my address where i am right now and he already has a pathway prepared before me he already knows from this point on this is the direction that i should take from where i am right now and if i can walk on that pathway his goodness will overtake me amen i will come forth as gold my feet will hold fast to that place they won't turn aside i'll be able to move forward in the things of the lord thank god amen moses as he stood before that great body of water and there's chariots and horsemen and all sorts of things things gathering behind him 600 chosen chariots i mean they had fresh oil changes their wheels were working right they uh they were ready to go and they didn't know what to do and yet i believe god had him in training his whole life for that moment in time he was 80 years old So, Dad, your ministry is just starting. He stood there in that place, and everyone was going crazy. And he said, you just need to stand still, and you are going to see the salvation of the Lord. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. But God is going to help you in some way. I said, God is going to make a way. God will do something Somehow, if God has led us to this place, God knows where we are, and the goodness of the Lord will catch up to us somehow. If you stand still, you'll see His salvation. If you stand still, you'll see His goodness. If you stand still, you're going to see God in action. Amen. If you don't know what to do, well, don't do anything at all until God shows you the way that you should go because God has a way that you should take. God knows the way that you should take. God has a plan and a path forward. You can't see it from where you are, but God can already see it. It's a good path. It's a good way. It's the goodness of the Lord. It is in the land of the living. It exists. There's a path way for you to walk on from wherever you are right now god has already made it it's already there it's in existence you can't see it with your physical eyes but the goodness of the lord is there in the land of the living i think that's the revelation that david got he said lord you're my light you're my salvation even in the dark there's the goodness of the lord god you're there you're going to help me somehow you're going to make a way for me Somehow stand with me if you would today. Amen. We love to sing songs about heaven. We love to talk about heavenly things. Everybody will be happy over there. We love to celebrate heaven. But here's what I came to tell you today. Don't wait for heaven to find the goodness of the Lord. There's heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I said there's heavenly places 
in Christ Jesus. I wouldn't have made it. But the Lord showed me. There's goodness from Him. It's here in the land of the living. God has it for me. Don't live below your privilege. <laughs> Don't walk away without the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Get every bit of God's goodness in your life that you can. Store it up. Put it in your pocket. Amen. Carry it out here with you. I wish I had some coolers so you could bring it home. I wish, I wish we could package this thing up. I wish you could take it with you. You're going to need the goodness of the Lord for the journey that you're on, for the place that you're going. You're going to need God's touch. You're going to need God's presence. You're going to need the goodness of the Lord to walk with you. You're going to need it on this journey. Amen. Amen. I believe God wants to infuse us with a heavenly breath from heaven. I believe God wants to pick someone up through the power of His Spirit. I believe God wants to put some victory in someone's heart today. I believe God wants to give you revelation of His goodness. I believe God wants to show you a little bit more of His beauty. Amen. Amen. So if you're here today and you say, Pastor, you know what? I need to see a little bit of the goodness of the Lord. I need it. I might just be preaching to one person. For the rest of you, I'll apologize. But for that one person, I won't. Whoever you are, if you need to see the goodness of the Lord in your life today, I want you to make yourself available. I want you to say, Lord God, give me that measure of revelation. I didn't get all dressed up and just come to church just for nothing. I came to see the goodness of the Lord in my life. You're here today and you're saying, Pastor, you're preaching to me. I want you to come stand up here in the front of this church. Come on. Amen. Amen. You need to see some goodness from the Lord. Whoever you are, come. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on in close. Come on up here close. Amen. We're going to pray, and then we'll sing a little bit, and we'll pray together with one another. We'll let the Lord do a work here today. I believe Jesus came to church to pick somebody up. It's been a long journey, but you need to get picked up. You need to meet with the goodness of the Lord. Let's pray. Jesus, in your name, Lord, you're here. Your presence is here. And we came, we came to behold the goodness of the Lord. We have one desire, and that's what we're looking for. That's what we're seeking after. We want to see you. We want to see you working in our life. We want to see you active in our life. And I pray you'd show us those things, Lord. I pray you'd bring your revelation to us, and I pray you'd show us your goodness today. Help us, Lord. Help someone to have a breakthrough of revelation. Help someone in this place, Lord God, to break free, Lord, of chains that are holding them or the lies of the enemy or fear that's binding them. Help them to break free of those things and help them, Lord God, to walk from this place just like you walk with David saying, I would have fainted, but I made it because I saw the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Do that work in us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Now, church, pray with someone. Find someone. Minister to them. Pray with them. Let's let the Spirit of the Lord do a work here today. Amen. Thank you.
fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me in all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. It's running out. 
your goodness is letting us do. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen. Amen.
amen, the Lord is still working here. Reach your hand to your neighbor, amen. And if, if you need to leave, we fully understand. But let's pray for just a little bit. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Your presence is here. Your strength is here. Your mercies are here, Lord. God, they're ministering to someone in this place. We thank you for it. Your goodness is here. Lord God, your help is here. Your strength is here. Thank you for a spirit of wisdom. Thank you for a spirit of revelation, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for showing us your beauty. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for revealing things to our spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your goodness, Lord God, of your presence, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord God. We can go forward, Lord, in your goodness. We can go forward, Lord Jesus, with your mercies. Oh, I thank you for it. Thank you for baptizing us fresh in it today. Thank you for, Lord, a special touch from your presence and your goodness. I praise you for it, Lord. For my brother, for my sister, I know you're already making a way in their tomorrow. You're already showing them a pathway. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for what you see. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I thank you for the ways in which you're working. Thank you for being a good God. Thank you for caring for us, Lord. The way you care for us, the way you take us up, Lord. I thank you for it. Thank you for it, Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, help us, Lord, this upcoming week. We want to walk with you. We want to be shepherded by you. We want to be directed by you. We want your goodness and mercy to follow us, Lord, throughout this upcoming week. Do your work in us. We're praising you for it. We're thanking you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a great hand clap of praise. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Encourage someone on the way out the door. That's your job. Amen. So encourage someone if you would. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you real good. Amen.